Hello and welcome to this AI Coffee Break. Did you ever wonder if it's possible to have a language model learn from previous queries and use that knowledge later on, making LLMs stateful? Well, then let Miss Coffee Bean tell you about today's topic, generative feedback loops. It's already common industry practice to fetch additional information from a vector database to support large language models with factual knowledge. But that invested compute time in generating outputs can be even better invested if you want to use the outputs of your language model in the future. Then you need to store the outputs again and make them searchable and fast to retrieve. And this is where generative feedback loops come in handy. They store the generated outputs back into the database with a vector embedding. This makes the generated data searchable in near real time so you can retrieve them for future applications. If you wonder whether your application needs generative feedback loops, this video is right for you because we will explain generative feedback loops and give examples of applications which require us to store generated outputs with generative feedback loops. We will also explain RAG to give you some context and show some code for a concrete example of how you can use generative feedback loops with our sponsor Weviate to create custom listings based on user preferences. Let's start with explaining RAG, which is already common practice to give generative large language models more specific or updated context. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, and it uses a vector database like Weviate to fetch relevant data for a language model to better contextualize the user's query and generate a more relevant, up-to-date response. Let's say we ask ChatGPT, what is the time we start releasing this new feature to our customers? An out-of-the-box LLM like ChatGPT would not have any idea about that because it has a limited knowledge horizon. But if we use RAG, the vector database can search through our proprietary and company internal database and fetch the relevant information. With this information, the language model can generate more accurate and relevant outputs, unlike an LLM that has been trained on data up to a certain date and contains information only up to April 2023, for example. A database can contain real-time information and with RAG we can continuously update the language model with the latest data, bypassing the limitation of its limited encoded knowledge. To make the LLM generate outputs based on the provided information only, we can use prompt engineering tactics like please base your response only on the provided information. Then, to make this retrieval process efficient and to find the most relevant information in the database, we need a vector database and vector search, which are offered by Weviate, for example, and it's open source. We have an entire video on how vector search works to retrieve relevant information in a vector database based on your prompt, so check out that if you want to learn more. We linked it in the video description. Let's get to the best part and discuss generative feedback loops. As mentioned earlier, it is common practice to fetch additional information from a vector database to support large language models with factual knowledge. Now, if you want to use the LLM outputs for a future application, we need to store the outputs again and make them searchable and fast to retrieve. And this is what we call generative feedback loops, which store the generated outputs back into the database with a vector embedding. This makes the generated data searchable in near real time if you use a fast vector search engine such as Weviate. So you can retrieve them for future applications. So let's give you some example of applications that require generative feedback loops. Maybe you want to do a photo labeling and categorizing app. You have a database of photos and you want to use metadata and the vision language model like GPT-4V to generate tags or descriptions of photos. You can then save these tags or descriptions back to the database and use them to find similar photos. Or you want to translate books. If you have a database full of text of technical books in Spanish and you want to use a language model to generate English translations, you can store these translated books in the database and use a powerful English language model to ask about the book content and create learning apps or sell the books. Maybe you want to summarize videos. You can use a language model to summarize the transcript of a video, save the summaries back to the database and use them and the user watch history to recommend what videos to watch next. 
or you want to create synthetic data sets for fine tuning language models. So you can use a language model to generate synthetic data for fine tuning, save the synthetic data back to the database and use it to fine tune your language model. Let's get into a concrete example and show some code. We are showing an example application of generative feedback loops to generate personalized ads for Airbnb listings. This example shows how LLMs can improve user experience by creating custom advertisements based on user preferences. We retrieve information about users from the database and give it plus information about the listing to the LLM and save the resulting custom advertisement back to the database. In the future, we may want to add other properties to the ad objects, such as dates when we ran the ad, how much we spent, and what was the resulting click-through rate. We could then generate a new ad by taking the top five highest CTR ads as reference. We'll use WeV8 for all things database and fast vector search. We create a new collection for the Airbnb listings and define our schema where a property has a name, description, host name, neighborhood, neighborhood group, and price. Then we upload the Airbnb listings data to WeV8 and WeV8 automatically vectorizes the database. Easy. With this prompt, we can use the LLM, which we have selected in the beginning here, OpenAI's Text Da Vinci 003, and generate a description for each listing in the collection. Now we can add our generated descriptions as a property to each listing, our first generative feedback loop. So here in the output, we see the generated description for each listing and the unique ID of the text description. Now we also want to generate ads. For this, we create a collection for ads and define the schema. We want our ads to have a content and a target audience. Then we add a reference property to our collection of listings. So each listing can have ads linked to it. Similarly, as before, when generated description for properties, we generate ads for each listing. We use the following prompt to make the LLM generate ads. We then create a new ad object in the ads collection and link the corresponding listing to it. So now we see in the output a generated ad for each listing. Next, we also want to generate ads that address a certain audience. And again, we need to specify a prompt for this. So now we see in the outputs that we have ads for specific target audiences. To make our ads even more personalized, we create a collection of individual users. Users have a name and a biography. We take, for example, Connor, the dog owner, and Bob, the weightlifter. To represent that an ad can be targeted to a certain user, for example, to Connor or Bob, we add a reference property to the ads collection. Now we achieve our end goal. We generate personalized ads for both Connor and Bob and any other user one could have and link the generated personalized ads to the corresponding user. Okay, great. Now we have a working example of creating a description of a listing, generating ads for these listings, and finally writing personalized ads for users with generative feedback loops. Now, maybe you're wondering what else you could do with generative feedback loops. Well, it is a very general paradigm that enables AI models to have states. The problem with current LLMs is that they get a prompt, generate an output, and then forget everything. But with generative feedback loops, we can store the outputs and use them as inputs for the next prompt. This way, we can create stateful AI models. Another example is something like DSPy that provides a structural framework for optimizing a model's prompt and improving complex generative AI systems. This solves a lot of our headache when we want to prompt an LLM to do something like write an ad, as in the example before. What is the best prompt? The spy automatically finds it by multiple programmatic attempts. The user defines the task they want to solve, for example, question answering, a solving strategy the user expects the LLM to use, a few labeled examples, and an evaluation measure. Then the spy programmatically constructs effective prompts and few short prompts that make the LLM work best for the user's strategy. But when generating so much data so quickly, when optimizing prompts or logging calls to LLMs, generating chain of thoughts with prompts, we need to monitor and observe what data comes out. 
Storing and searching through it with VB8 feedback loops is a great way to inspect it. There are many other ideas for generative feedback loops, such as you could prompt LLMs to output their knowledge and create knowledge graphs with the outputs and store them again. Or you could use generative feedback loops for podcast summarization and make them searchable. Connor did a great video on this recently, so check that out if you want to learn more. We linked it in the video description. Now, we have even more links there if you want to learn more about generative feedback loops and how to implement them. Thanks to WeV8 for sponsoring this video. WeV8 is an open source cloud native vector search engine that allows you to search through your data in real time. Check out the links in the description to learn more about WeV8 and generative feedback loops with LLMs for vector databases. We hope you liked this video. Do not forget to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with our upcoming videos.